Father Ovet, always a blessing. My life is blessed blessed. with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. My life is blessed blessed. with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Everywhere I go. Surely must be blessed everywhere I go. Surely must be blessed. My life is blessed with the blessings of the Lord. My hands, my hands. Blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Everything I touch surely must be blessed. Everything I touch. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing our heart in Jesus, and for blessing our lives. Jesus, everything we touch and everywhere yes, we go Lord, in the name of Jesus surely must be blessed. In Jesus' name, we in ask Jesus. that this night, as we go into the Word of God, let the moments we share together be full of blessing. In Jesus' name, I come against every tragedy of the enemy, every. Spirit that is assigned against this moment, we cast and we cast it from our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. And every form of projection in TV world coming against us. In the name of Jesus. We command it back to sender in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh Lord God of heaven. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. I'm seeing a vision of a people whose hands and feet are in chains. In the visions of God, I see a people who are febrile, weak, and can barely do anything for themselves. Jesus, yes, Lord. And as we were singing and I watched on in the visions of God, I saw the reign of righteousness come upon these people, destitute, naked, who could barely do anything for themselves. And instantly I heard the word of God come as lightning and thunder. It sounded where they were, and the chains fell off their feet. Jesus' name. And off their hands. Jesus. And I saw the refreshing rain of the Spirit come upon them to wash them. Jesus' name. And the voice of the Lord said in the vision, Speak the word. Yes. So that my children will be free in Jesus name from the plague yes. that they have suffered in Jesus name I see the angels of God oh, by means of the word that we hear tonight and lives around and restore fortunes to people in the name of Jesus even to the glory of God yes Lord let him that had ear tonight hear what the Spirit saith, even to the churches. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Everywhere I go, surely must be blessed. Everywhere I go, surely must be blessed. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. With the blessings of the Lord, with the blessings of the Lord, everything I touch surely must be blessed. Everything I touch surely must be blessed. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Let's do it again. My life is. With the blessings of the Lord, my life is blessed. My life is blessed. With the blessings of the Lord, with the blessings of the Lord, everywhere I go, surely must be blessed. Everywhere I go, surely must be blessed. My life is blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Your life is blessed in Jesus' name. Your hands are blessed in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Why? Yes. Am I poor? Yes. Before we touch on the topic. Mm. I want everybody to know that this Kairos moment is supposed to create and mark a shift in your life. Jesus name. You have heard many messages on money, but this one is with a difference and I'm approaching this subject of money and poverty and riches from a deeply spiritual perspective. Mm. Because starry night is to unveil That's right. the works of darkness yes. and their agenda against the people of God. Mm. There are several ways to talk about money. You could talk about the frugality of money. How to be frugal in the sense of making sure that you follow the principles of wealth where people endeavor to save endeavor to invest endeavor to seek for opportunities that come their way to make the best of the times and to make sure that they are taking wise decisions all right in almost all my christian life i say this with tears in my eyes that I never got the opportunity in my life to hear the means and the ways by which the enemy attacks people in their finances mm. in all my Christian life when I was growing up. Mm. Every message I had on money centered on why I must prosper, why I should be frugal. It sounded just like the world's ideology and concept of making money. Yeah. But I could feel that there was something more than that. If there was any other thing it was rather an expose on God's desire and pleasure that his people should prosper mm. because God takes pleasure in the prosperity of the saints quite apart from that if there was any other message that came 
on the lines of kingdom prosperity it was on the application of kingdom principles and kingdom keys mm. talking about tithes talking about offerings talking about prophet suffering and all of that yes but i believe that there is somebody who is watching me in tv world mm. who mm. has mm. the same experience that i had and is of like thoughts yes and is like-minded like myself who has operated for all god knows the keys of the kingdom the key of covenant practice yes. tithing first fruits and offerings to the prophet seed sowing sowing seeds harvesting your seed and everything but past that they are just not seeing the harvest that is theirs mm -hmm. I ask myself the question could we be doing everything right mm. and still get it wrong it moved me to prayer it moved me into the place where I was asking questions with God why and the gate opened before me and I heard a voice come out of the gate that my people perish because of their lack of knowledge not only with matters of the kingdom but with matters of the anti-kingdom. In all of the scriptures, there is only one thing that challenges the place of God, not even the devil. The devil does not stand in opposition to God. The only thing that stands in opposition to God is mammon. Wow. That which stands in opposition to God. To God. In the word. In the word of God is unveiled to be mammon. It's not even Satan. It's not Satan. <laughs> I am not going to go into the seven masters of hell. We could talk about that later. But one of the seven masters of hell is mammon. And when we talk about the seven masters of hell, we are talking about the seven more wicked spirits than satan that means there are seven spiritual entities there are seven particular spiritual entities that are more wicked that are more wicked than satan and one of them is mammon we would love to come to this matter on a very good deal that mammon. should be another time <laughs> yes another time yes and mammon is part of them mammon is one of the seven masters of hell the mammon spirit the word of god says that mammon is a master mm. so he says no man can serve two masters that's emphatic emphatic no man can serve two masters he says for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot save god and mammon and this is jesus christ talking hmm. when you read the book of malachi god himself says if i be a father if i be a master where is my honor when he was admonishing the entire nation on the matter of tithes and offerings he said a son honoreth his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is my honor and if i be a master where is my fear see the lord of hosts oh priest that despise my name and you say wherein have we despised thy name you offer polluted bread upon my altar and you say wherein have i polluted thee in that you say the table of the lord is contemptible and you offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if you offer the lame and sick is it not evil of i now unto your governor will he be pleased with you or accept your person see the lord of hosts hmm. so we realize that according to jesus 
there is God and what opposes him God is a master no man can serve two masters so please I want you to understand that the subject matter I'm about dealing with at Harry night today I'm dealing with a master entity hmm. in the amplified Bible the word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood yes when you read that in the amplifier he said for we wrestle against master spirits despotisms master spirits for we wrestle not with flesh and blood contending only with physical openings but against despotisms against the powers against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spirit forces of darkness in the heavenly supernatural sphere we are dealing with a master spirit mammon is one of the master spirits of hell I take it to hell for a reason because there is a way to open a treasure account in heaven there are many people who are working in this world who don't have any treasure or treasury or a bank account in heaven pastor I'm speaking of things that I have seen hmm. and I have known not only reading the scriptures the scriptures open them up to me and confirm the very encounters that I have had in the spirit so I'm not only talking about matters of quoting scriptures I'm talking about things hmm. that I have been shown hmm. in the heavenlies hmm. so the word of God says lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust not corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust not corrupt where thieves do not break through nor steal and do you know that mammon as a spirit is actually a word that comes from the word possession or treasuries which is mammonus I would later on deal with the dimension of the heavenly treasure hmm. but we are dealing with tarry nights where we unveil yes darkness yes now mammon as a spirit is actually an entity that controls the wealth of the kingdom of darkness the ruling being the ruling being that handles the wealth the wealth of darkness of darkness is and he is a master spirit there are various kinds of spirits yes we are dealing with master spirits and of all the seven master spirits of hell mammon stands mm -hmm. as the arc head wow. of the seven master spirits of hell I mean, it's no wonder jesus himself is telling us that they he stands masters. in opposition to God. There are only two masters. God and Mammon. Hmm. This Mammon spirit is a spirit that goes for the hearts of men. Various spirits have what they want from men. <laughs> I'm taking aback. I, 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 I thought probably, Marlon, where you're going to talk about the fact that Mammon is looking for the pockets of no, their, no, no, their wealth, no, their heart. Why that? That is the nature of Mammon's spirit. His act work and objective is to steal the hearts of men away from God. And he does that by presenting men what is referred to as the deceit of riches, the deceitfulness of riches. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches in Mark chapter 4 verse 19 and the last of other things entering in, where? Entering into their heart choke the word and it becometh unfruitful 
so you cannot bear the fruits of the word so you have gone into the scriptures you have found that in the scripture there is titan in the scripture there is prophet's offering in the scripture there is seed sowing in the scripture there is praying yes. but why is it that you are not bearing fruit look at this the word of god said that he also that receives seed for he said the seed is the word of god among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful that means that so potent is this entity we are talking about yes that it has the ability to nullify the impact the of impact God's word the of the truth of the word of god in your heart that is the reason why in the visions of god where i was carried into to see the gates of wealth of our kingdom the extent of riches i was opportune to see i could only question why i was shown my wealth and shown the wealth of great patriarchs of our day and the patriarchs of old matriarchs of our day matriarchs of old and the extent of opulence that has been packed for them but they had no access to it and as i was looking at this i knew and i was asking the question don't they tight he said this is not about tithing don't they give offerings he said this is not about offerings my people have been raised to understand kingdom practice but they have not been told how the practice of the kingdom gets choked by a spirit in hell the master spirit called mammon mercy so you can know all the secrets of wealth mm, 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 by mm, kingdom mm, practice yeah and yeah, you will yeah, not be yeah, able yeah. to bear the fruits yeah. of the seed of yes. that kingdom practice mm. because mammon has stolen your heart Mercy. there are many a people who preach prosperity out of greed and the other name of mammon is hmm. greed hmm. so you'll be wondering I'm giving a tithe because I'm told that when I give the tithe, God will bless me and you are in a greed trading floor. Mammon is happy because the spirit of greed is also the spirit of Mammon. He is a master spirit. Pastor, there are many people that you see in this world. They have cars, they have houses, but they are poor. Because when you hear a lot of the messages on poverty, listen, when you read the revelation of Jesus chapter 2, the verse number 9, the word of God shows us a paradox of the definition of riches and poverty. He said, I know your works and your tribulation and I know your poverty, but thou art rich. That's, that's paradoxical. You, he said, I know your works. I know your tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Hmm. Then look at the paradox. So we are seeing a people that yes. are poor, but are rich. Yes. Then look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 17 to the verse 18. Then he says, But thou sayest, I am rich. Mm -hmm. Increase with goods. Yes. Have need of nothing. Yes. But thou knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor. So we are seeing a paradox of a people that on the outside on the outside we are seeing them to be poor poor but god is telling us that they are rich they are rich yes and we are seeing another group of people who are proclaiming their riches yes and their affluence their yes. opulence yes and yet god is telling us that they are they are, they are rich they are rich miserable miserable poor, poor, blind blind and naked. naked i mean all the adjectives that go with people who are in penury yes man of god how does that happen so the question is why am i poor yes I want to find out which kind of poverty you are talking about. Mm. Are you talking about Revelation chapter 2 verse 9? Mm. That makes you think you are poor and God is saying you are rich. Mm. Or you are talking about Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 to 18 mm. where you say you are rich, rich and God is saying you are Mercy. poor. Which is your experience presently? Oh Jesus. There is a serious 
paradoxical definition to poverty let us get it straight that poverty is not how we see it in this world poverty is not how we see it. poverty is not how we see it in this world there are people that we are seeing to be poor there are world, people we see to be poor but they are very rich in the book of james the chapter 5 from the verse 1 downwards but i love to read it in the verse 4 of the niv james chapter 5 the verse 4 of the niv he says look let's start from verse 1 so that we're able to get exactly what i want to say now listen you rich people weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you verse 2 your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes your gold and silver are corroded Mm. their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire you have hoarded wealth in the last days look the wages you failed to pay the workmen who mowed your fields are crying against you the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the lord almighty verse 5 you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence you have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter you have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. Mercy. Now, in looking at this verse critically, you will realize these are people that know they are rich. Yes. And they have kept and amassed wealth for the last days. Hmm. We'll look at that process yes. and how that exactly is carried out. Oh. Rich guys. Then the book of James also speaks of those who in this world are rich. But actually, they are actually rich by the terminology by which the world calls riches. riches. That means that in the book of James, they are they are <laughs> they are rich in the perspective of the world yes. not from the perspective of God not from the perspective of God in the book of James they are rich but their riches is by the definition of the people of this world let me just give that verse of scripture for us in a moment <sighs> we are still on tarry night with the man of God um, Pastor Ved a lot of insight is coming to us this blessed night. Um, you want to call your friends, your family members, your James life. chapter 2. You want to get them seated. The truth of God's word that is coming is so phenomenal. They must hear this emphatically. Look at this. James chapter 2, the verse number 5. See how he puts it in the NIV. Watch this. Listen, my dear brothers. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith <laughs> poor in the eyes of the world they are poor in the eyes of the world there are many people christians who are rich and the world calls them rich but in the eyes of god they are poor revelation chapter 3 17 to 18. Yes. you say you are rich yes the Laodicean church you say you are rich but you do not know that you are poor then there are people who are poor in the eyes of this world so if you are asking me the question why am I poor my question to you is also are you looking at yourself with the eyes of the world do you think you are poor in the estimates of the world because a lot of believers are brought under the pressure of the definition the scope of sight by which the world gazes and watch them and if you define your wealth and your wealth by the world's estimation you are as blind as the people in the world if your perspective of wealth your perspective of wealth is as the world it's just like the world then you are equally you as are blind. equally as blind as, as the, the people is. in the world mm, that's 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 deep so the question is why am i poor that's what we are dealing with yes 
I want to ask you a question. Why are you asking that question? Why are you poor? Do you think you are poor? With the goggles of the world. Are you using the spectacles of the world mm. to define your poverty? Or you are using kingdom definition of poverty? I see. We want to take a quick break. We'll be back shortly with the man of God, Pastor Bed. Pastor Obed, always a blessing.